listening. So this next hour is just going to be Sean and I talking about, well, um, Sean. So <laughs> if you guys have any questions, make sure to go on our Discord and at me some questions so I can go ahead and ask of them. But yeah, Sean, I think actually one of the questions, here's a great way to bring this up. So P.S. Coldfire, hey there, P.S., um, says, how well did we all do in this open mic night? What are your tips? <laughs> tips i don't know if i'm the one who should be giving tips um i i one thing that yes there was a range of experience but for sure what happened consistently across every single participant is that they committed to the role and i could hear that commitment um regardless of what level of experience they had and that's super important because uh, especially in this industry, having confidence that you're capable and being committed to the choice that you make are two of the biggest facets of, of not just sending an audition that's competitive, but being able to keep up, I don't want to say keep up appearances, but stay in the game once you're actually in the booth. Because uh, when you finally land a role that comes back for 5, 10, 50 sessions for a single project, consistency becomes a really big deal. And so not losing that confidence in yourself and not losing that sense of, I know I can do this, so I'm going to just do it, is very important to maintain that consistency. And so I applaud everyone who took part tonight because even if they were brand new to this, even if they've been doing it for a while, they all committed to their choices. And I respect that a lot. Definitely. You know, um, a thing here, we, we have um, right now a bit of a selection of scripts and some people do go ahead and read most of them and and get familiarized but you're you're really never ready you know all of these people are doing cold reads just like you did today and um and, they're and, so and no matter how much you read it to yourself uh, no matter how much you read it to yourself you still have to react to other people's deliveries and when you read it to yourself sure you assign a delivery in your head but that doesn't mean that's how the other person is going to do it and this is a big part of why improv classes and workshops are so important is because um being able to react rather than just act is how you're going to make any performance more authentic and believable and especially in the current state of the industry especially when it comes to commercials more and even in video games more and more clients are asking for it, it's become a point of contention because they say we want real people not voice actors exactly. so they want they want these voice actors who can sound like they're not acting. They just are talking. And stuff like this is a perfect way to get that experience. Oh, definitely. And let me let me just tell you, as I'll tell anybody who's listening to this Twitch stream and, you know, may, might be one of your fans that's never been on this Discord. Um, Center Stage, the cool thing about us is that we have this little channel called Looking for Groups. And uh, I, I'm actually a part of it, too. I go ahead and I go in there, too. And, and I find, uh, you know, people and we just read the scripts for fun and we try different voices we have a great time and we're just improving the whole time and definitely like you say uh it's it's 10 times better if, if it just comes smoothly to you instead of robotic so yeah that's a yeah. that's yeah. a that's a great answer man thank you so much that was a good one um I, real quick i have so many people asking me so let me tell you how many people quinny's asking me um anthony uh <laughs> anthony va is asking me who else was asking? Mista said a few things over there. And then also Alibi Z said something. And I'm just going to ask from, from what Alibi Z said. Um, <clears throat> Amelia or Rem? Felix. <laughs> Actually, that's really funny because Mista said, uh, don't waste your breath, everyone knows Felix is the best oh girl it's i mean it's i'm just being consistent because i've been asked that question on reddit i've been asked it on youtube listen the thing about felix is is felix has a wonderful personality felix has an absolutely gigantic sense of determination and and what's not to love about that <laughs> definitely definitely you know i'm, I'm really excited to, to hear you man now i can be like oh my god i know who that is and everybody who who is here listening to this twitch stream can be like oh my god i know who's voicing it's gonna be so good it's gonna we're, we're all very excited and, and we're all very happy and you know i don't congrats on your i think i, I tweeted you congrats but congrats um, i'm i 
Save the save the congrats for after the dub comes out because like I haven't even been able to hear my own finished performance or anyone else's performance. Like literally, I think out of all the episodes I recorded, I heard other people's lines uh, less than ten times across mm -hmm. everyone total. So I don't know what everyone sounds like together. So I am I'm very very happy that I had the opportunity and I know I gave it every ounce of my effort. But let's hold the celebrations until the dub is out and we can discern. For for real, if if it all sounds good put together. Fine, fine, fine. But let me tell you something. After listening to you script reading, I know they came out awesome times ten. I'm pretty sure. Oh stop! <laughs> oh stop! Keep going, keep going, keep going. So, next up, Mr. Magic Al has something for us. Uh, he says, "What finished project, show, game, or etc. Uh, that you were involved in with?" With that, which one was the most difficult for you to watch and actually, you know, do? Uh, when you say most difficult to watch, you mean most difficult to watch my own performance, I or? Believe, so I believe that's what he's trying to say. He says watch slash play. So let's say let's say most difficult to see yourself do and most difficult it for would, you to do. It would definitely be watched simply because my my big personal stick is that I have not really owned and played a game that I have voiced in yet, mainly because the stuff that I've voiced in isn't my genre. Like, I was in the Fire Emblem Shadows of Valencia, but I'm not into strategy games um, and, and stuff like right. that. So Watch would definitely be it. Um, Dante Mogro from Iron Blood Orphans was really hard for me to watch just because I'm not as huge a Gundam fan as a lot of my friends. And Dante was also... Like I said, one thing I am trying to work on is being more real with my performances. And Gundam is a very serious, very war-focused, you know, this is the mm -hmm. emotional and mental impact on these kids. Mm -hmm. um, and Dante was also a deeper role. So it was combining uh, the weaker side of my range, which is my lower pitch, with something that I'm trying to regularly improve on, which is speaking as a real person uh, in, a, in an anime context. And it just made it, I, I definitely spent more time as Dante trying to maintain consistency than being able to just let loose and have fun. It was definitely a challenge. Yeah. Um, Rivali continues to be a challenge because to voice Rivali, I ended up having to scrap everything that I developed in my head about the character and his voice type, which I later learned would have fit really great for his Japanese performance, but it wasn't what Nintendo wanted for the English. So I ended up really heavily relying on my director, Jamie Mortolaro, and to this day, people are like, holy crap, Rivali is one of the best voice characters in the game. And I go, great, maybe one day I'll finally realize and understand why. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I de it's. I feel like when we don't, when we, when we think we did our worst, we do our best. Isn't that weird? Like sometimes. See, that's why I'm scared about Subaru. <laughs> that's why I'm scared about Subaru because I love that character and I love that franchise and I and I and I gave it my all and now I'm scared because I'm so confident about it. It's gonna be like the kid who's like, I studied hard for that science test. I'm gonna get a 63. <laughs> exactly. Like I feel. I mean. To be honest, I feel like sometimes you think you do really, really good in a role, and then you, like, totally, you know, don't even get the role. And then sometimes you think you did your absolute worst, and it's, like, right there in your face, you got the role. So I feel like it, it's... Right, right, right. Like, like, it could equally it could equally end up being, like, with Zank. With Zank, I was like, I know what I'm doing here. I know his personality, and I know what I want to do. And I did it, and the director loved it, and it was perfect. So awesome. I may be psyching myself out, but I, it definitely goes both ways. Yeah, definitely. So our, our next our next uh, question is from Amiel1124, and he's asking, what was your favorite script tonight? Which one was your favorite script? Huh? Uh, definitely not the one that was full of misogyny. Definitely not that one. Um, oh, that's hard, because like, script one was really comedic, and script, script three was really serious. Of the three that we did... I, you know what, I liked script three the best, and that's partially because one of the roles that was performed, the person playing it did such a fantastic job, and it really helped me get committed to the scene and envision it in my head. So kudos, kudos to that person. Your performance is what made that script my favorite of the day. Awesome, awesome. And I, I guess we're not going to say who that person is because we want to make everybody feel like they did great. <laughs> 
<laughs> Everybody did do great. Right, 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 right. Everybody did do great. Um, You'll notice I didn't I didn't use gender honorifics either. Oh yeah, I saw I, I saw that. And you know, like those are the best ones. I think when when you get when you have a good team on your hands and you can just, you know, feel each other out and everybody's going at it and it's going well, you get so into character so quickly. I mean, you know, we've all been through, you know, hard reads uh, where it's just not working out. But when you're able to get in sync with everybody else, I think those are like the, gr the greatest reads ever because you really get to get into yeah. character. Really get yep. Yeah, definitely. So awesome. Script three. Yeah, that was... That was one of my. That was my favorite too. It's just, and I'm so. I was so amazed because you would, you would go over to, you know, the man character, and then you'd be like narrating, like Sean's voice right now, narrating, and then. <laughs> It was really, really cool. <laughs> it's, exactly, it's exactly what I did. For those of you who missed out, whenever the man talked, I just went. <laughs> it's, it's basically the same as when my wife comes back and it's like, why didn't you do the dishes? <laughs> 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 Yeah, man. I'm going to use that from now on to, to get away with things. <laughs> Let me go ahead and get our next person. Da, 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 da. So, uh, Sid. Oh, I keep saying Sid. So, uh, Riku asks, um, what would you say has been your favorite role so far? And what would you say would be that your is not role? It's not a question I can answer because every role, and I people can go back to previous uh, interviews I've done, and I will say the same thing. Every role to me, I find something to reflect on and keep, whether it's I got to do something I know I'm good at and I got to showcase my skill, or it was a challenge that I had to overcome, or it was a new milestone in my career. So Supernatsuki, first lead role in an anime. Zenk from Fairy Fencer F, uh, of the exact kind of role that Liam O'Brien used to do that inspired me and made me want to get into the career. Um, Rivali, uh, even, even just within Breath of the Wild, Rivali was a character I thought would be super easy and was really frustrating. Teba was a character that is 100% my own vocal creation. What I auditioned with and what they used in the game is exactly the same with no tweaks. Nice. Um, and Deku Tree was one of those cases where I deliberately challenged myself to try and surprise the director and it paid off for precisely that reason. Cool, cool. I think that, that's a really good answer too because I... I feel like everybody should really like every role that they do. I mean, you audition for it, so you kind of have to like it. I feel like you wouldn't audition for something if you don't like it, right? Right. Yeah, there we go. And then uh, Riku also asked, what would you say would be a dream role of yours? Well, the goalposts keep moving for me. Um, so when it first started, it was, I want to be in an anime that gets broadcast on Toonami. And I technically did that when I was in Diabelle and Sword Art Online episode two. Uh, so then it became, I want to get a main character. And I got that through Reen Schwarzer in Trails of Cold Steel. So then it became, I want to be a lead role in an anime because anime is what got me into this career to begin with. Mm -hmm. And I finally accomplished that by doing, obviously, Subrunatsuki for ReZero. And what a hell of a first anime to have a lead role in. Yes. Um, I, I really am excited for what that might do for my career. So now the big one, which may have a shorter timestamp than I'm comfortable with is I am crazy about dungeon crawlers. I got into dungeon crawlers because of Etrian Odyssey 4, and then I played Demon Gaze and Dungeon Travelers 2 and Operation Babel, Operation Abyss. My, I, I would love to be either a main story character or a party member in a dungeon crawler, or to even just be like one of the male voice options that you can pick, because a lot of them have like character customization right. and you can set voice types. Um, and I would love to be one of those male voice types, either for the determined, heroic, uh, lackadaisical, comedic, whatever. And I missed out on Etrian Odyssey 4 and Etrian Odyssey 5, but Etrian Odyssey Cross just got announced, and it probably hasn't been dubbed yet, and I would kill to just have audition opportunities for that game. Probably won't get the chance because I still haven't managed to get in with the company that does the dubbing for those games, but just in general, um, I want to be a, a bigger role or a party member style role in a dungeon crawler. I am in a dungeon crawler because I voice Mamoru and Hitsuka in Mary Skelter, and I will finally get to hear myself when I play that, but that's on the backlog, so we're not there yet. Nice, and you know, uh, the answer you just gave, uh, let's go ahead and real quick uh, talk about it. Um, goal setting is a huge, 
huge thing. And I feel like a lot of people think that once one goal is done, then you know what else is left. And Sean, your that answer, is literally how I keep myself sane. That is how I keep myself how you do sane. It. You I, gotta keep going. You gotta keep pushing. If I didn't set my the last time that I sort of let myself coast was after I won the AX Idol competition in 2009. And at that point I was like, hey, this is proof that I know what I'm doing in regards to anime. And I let that mentality of, I know what I'm doing, take over. And what followed was two years, two years of terrible phoned in performances. Cause I just figured since I knew what I was doing that if I did these reads that they would sound good. And it royally pissed off my mentor and at least one other person that I know of. So now I, even if I'm confident in stuff that I've done, <laughs> I always try to remind myself of something that I've put off or that I could stand to improve or that I haven't accomplished yet that I can start working towards. Because the moment that I allow myself to coast is the moment that at best I just stay where I'm at. And at worst, I start getting worse and I would rather always be improving. Yeah, and, and this is for any listener out there, too, you know. It's great if you got your first uh, gig, but that doesn't mean that you keep, you know, you, you got to keep going and you got to keep setting goals, just as Sean said, you know. He had People? one goal and then he had a bunch of other goals. And, you know, that that's how that's how you got to keep uh, keep up in life. When you finish one dream, you got to go for another one. After recording finished up for ReZero... I did not book a single studio gig for four months after that job finished. The fact that I played a lead role had no bearing whatsoever on my my uh, usability for future projects. And a lot fewer people outside of our demographic know about Breath of the Wild than you'd think. Outside of the internet and outside of conventions, obviously, the closest I have come to someone recognizing the term Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild was a 40 something year old man who said, oh yeah, I had a Nintendo. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we, we're a very small niche, let me tell you, the voice acting community, because I feel like us voice actors, you barely see our faces. You know, you see, everybody knows Sean's voice. And not even because, I mean, you have such a wide range of voices that you, it's, it's hard to, to, to figure out who's playing who and, and who's voicing what. And I think that it's, it's good because you don't get crazily attacked by fans randomly when you're shopping, but it's right. also kind of like, you know, right. it's, <laughs> it can go both ways. If you're looking for, you know, to be recognized, that might be a little harder in this, in this exact. If you're, way. if you're in this, if you're in this to be recognized, get out. Like seriously. I just, I, it's only recently that I've been able to have the good fortune of getting invited to conventions as a guest. And even just convincing conventions to consider you is, it's so stressful. It's, it, sometimes the roles don't even matter. Sometimes it's about the number of Twitter followers you have or the right. number of attendee tickets you could end up selling. It's a popularity contest oh, at definitely. times. And it can be so stressful. I, I bet and, and you know again let me put that out there for everybody listening look Sean had a big break and then even then you might not have something for four months but that doesn't mean you quit you keep going you keep going keep trucking and that's how you're gonna uh, you know Gotta. move you forward yeah so let's go on to our next uh question um this one is a re-zero question and it's from digiblade and they ask if you could voice Felix. <laughs> okay so if you could voice another character it'd be Felix Oh, no, no, no. If I could voice, I mean, <laughs> yes, but if I could voice another character. So when I got the audition for Subaru, and I'd already seen the series entirely at this point, but when I got the audition for Subaru, I said, if I don't book Subaru, I pray to God that I get auditions for Battle Geeks because uh, I, Zenk is a perfect example. I excel with eccentric, crazy, exaggerated characters. I, I am that person who will put 150% into a read that demands 100% of the energy. I am ready. I will destroy my throat just to get a better <laughs> read. So when I booked Subaru, I was already elated until I re remembered and realized that there's a part in the series where Subaru gets, you know, that. Uh -huh. <laughs> so... So I am so excited for that because I I get to like 
portray different character types, including types that I really, really enjoy. And and it absolutely would have been Battle, Battle Goose. And just by nature of playing Subaru, I kind of cheated and got to eat both slices of cake. Nice, nice. Enjoy that cake. That cake was well-deserved. <laughs> it's carrot cake. I'm working through it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And um, let me go ahead and see who I have. And I mean, this is a really good question. Alibi Z also asked, how did you get your first big break? How was that? God, I don't know what my first big break counts as. Like, there's milestones. The The big break um, with Anime Expo was I remember learning about the AX Idol competition, and I told my dad while we were on a ski trip, this is what I want for my birthday present. Um, I, I will pay for everything I need to pay for when I'm there, and I'll save up the money, but I'd like help with the plane flight. And dad said, okay. And I, I ended up winning. The very first anime con convention I ever went to was Anime Expo. So I started I started my Weeboo adventure with a convention that had like 70,000 people attending. Um, and at the time that I won the competition, I was not only the youngest winner to date, I think I was 19, but also the first male contestant to win since it started about seven years ago. Nice. Um, so that's what got my foot in the door with Bang Zoom, which I think was a huge, huge, uh, huge portion. Because when I first moved to California for the first two years, Bang Zoom was really my only connection to clients that I ended up working with. Uh, when I landed the role of Reen Schwarzer in Trails of Cold Steel, what happened was the localization editor remembered me from a performance I did on East Memories of Celseta, which was recorded at Bang Zoom back in like 2013. So I actually think regardless of the new stuff that I've done, uh, that that foot in the door with Bang Zoom through AX Idol was what gave me this the stepping stone, the starting point of my connection network web that allowed me to slowly over time make new connections with new clients, and then further expand what studios I ended up working at and who was sending me auditions. Yeah, then that goes to show you, you just need one, you just need that one chance. That one plane and, and it, made the difference. And it, not just the one chance, but stuff in the future. Like I have built, my, my agency found me, and I started work with Mattel and Disney Parks through workshops in California. So even though I'm in with Bang Zoom, I still look for additional opportunities to put myself in front of clients. And uh, speaking about Disney Parks, what, where can we hear your voice in a Disney Park, mister? Uh, not anymore, but I was for a period of about four months from February until late June, I was a member of the Turtle Talk performance team at Disney California Adventure. The Turtle Talk? <laughs> I'm, I'm, um, I'm here. However, I have, I have done, go ahead. No, 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 go, 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 go. I have done voices, I have done voices for, um, uh, Disney Pixar uh, toy commercials. If you go on YouTube and you look up for uh, Lightspeed Loop and Launcher, Disney Pixar Cars, that is my voice as the uh, epic hype-up announcer guy. Cool. You know, I, I feel like I feel like you'd be really good at the Disney Channel announcer. You know the Disney Channel announcer that he's like, you know, up next, here's this movie or whatever. I feel like you'd be... It's you'd time be for more Spongebob only on Disney XD. There, wait, Spongebob's on Disney? Shh. <laughs> I caught you. <laughs> All right, let's keep on going for the questions, and we're gonna ignore the fact that you totally thought SpongeBob was Disney. Um, so Zelda fan, actually, we we worked uh, Zelda fan. We had uh, read a script with, and Zelda fan asked, "How did you end up getting cast in Zelda: Breath of the Wild?" Oh, this is a fun story. Oh, so story. when I first got the auditions, they were codenamed to Helen back. And I like, like none of the character names were what they were supposed to be and whatever else. And based on the information I was given and the accents they were asking for, I thought, huh, is this for the next Dragon Quest game? So I recorded the auditions uh, at the studio um, and I sent them off. And then I went to go visit my then Girlfriend, fiance, fiance, yeah, fiance. Um, <laughs> I don't. Sure you get look, we we we, right? <laughs> we were pretty much married. We were pretty much married by the time we got engaged, so it doesn't matter to me. There you go. Anyway, so I went to visit her during our once or twice a year visits that we made to each other back. Because when I moved out to California, she still had two years to finish uh, her college work in Michigan. 
Um, and so we only got to visit financially each other m once, maybe twice per year. I would visit her once and then she would always come by for Anime Expo. So I was scheduled to be there for three weeks at the, uh, for her birthday, mind you. One week into the visit, I get a call or an email that says I got a call back for this project. And they said the callback was going to be in two days from then in Los Angeles. And I did have the option to do a remote audition if I wanted, but it was going to happen in those two days. It couldn't have, they couldn't reschedule. So I had to make a choice. Mm -hmm. And at that point, when I had thought about the code names of the characters and what Nintendo had been working on recently, there was that moment that I went, no way. <laughs> you had to. There's yeah. no way. And at that moment, I thought, okay, if it is what it, I think it might be for, I, I made a choice. I said, I'm going to have to buy a brand new plane ticket. I'm going to have to pay full price. I'm going to have to cut short my visit to, to my, my beloved, my significant other. And, um, but I don't want to take that risk. Mm -hmm. I don't want to risk just doing it from, from my laptop with however garbage the quality is. I want to be at the studio on their equipment so they can hear me at the best possible quality and I can get live feedback from the director. I have to make that jump. Mm -hmm. And I did, I explained the situation to my SO and she was very, very, very upset with me, but she understood <laughs> and I paid about $500 for a next day plane ticket and I flew home and I went to that audition and I legitimately think it played a big role in me getting cast. In fact, just the whole recording process was examples of taking a risk and having confidence. Originally, I was only cast as the Great Deku Tree. Um, it started as just the Great Deku Tree. And what happened was over the course of the recording production, the chance to read for Rivali came up and that's how I ended up getting that role. Yeah. But I only got cast for Deku Tree because I tried out for Deku Tree. And when I first, when I did my first auditions, I told my mentor, all right, I've done these two characters that are relatively within my strengths. I wanna, for my third character, I wanna do this guy who's gonna be very deep and very wise. And my mentor was like, uh, why? That's not your strength. And I said, I wanna surprise them with the contrast. I wanna figure out something I can do that would work for this character that sounds completely different to the other two. And I think that played a role. The, the director, when I did the callback said, you know, if you weren't here in this booth doing this for me right now, just based on what you look like, I wouldn't have known it was you doing it. I wouldn't have believed it was you doing it. So going against the grain and challenging myself to surprise people is what led to me even becoming a part of the game to begin with. And that is what eventually allowed me to get the character that I love and that is near and dear to my heart. Wow, that's a, that's, that is a great story. And, and really going against the grain, that's, you know, a lot of people are scared of that. I feel like that's, that's many people's worry. Like, you know, I'm not really strong in this. I shouldn't try, but Hey guys, everybody who's listening, look, Sean, uh, his, even his mentor said, that's not, it's not your, you know, slice of cake. And he's like, well, I'm going to make this, I'm going to bake this cake and I'm going to give it out. And you I'm did. Give it out. It's a piece of cake to bake a pretty cake. There you go. And it was a carrot cake and you still baked it and, and it was nice. So there you go. I, I mean, that that's a, that's a great story. Really, really great story. And let's go ahead and, you know, keep up with this like little motivational thing we've got going on here. Renny Chan asks, what keeps you motivated when you feel down about voice acting? If, if that even happens. A lot of booze. No. A lot of booze. Um, my <laughs> okay. wife, my wife is my biggest fan. Like Aww. she geeks out harder than anybody else and she screeches when she hears about the roles I get to play which I imagine might be cool for her because like she gets to totally tell people that her her husband mm, got murdered 50 different times and got paid for it <laughs> she's like he got so much practice because every time I come home and the dishes aren't done he <laughs> dies another painful way <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure she was also, she, hey, give her credit. She's also probably the reason you got uh, into uh, that Zelda game because she's probably like, oh, he better get that. He better get that role if he just left me. I to swear go to God, that. I swear to God, she said, she said, all right, I'm gonna let you go home, but hear this boy. And she did, she did the hand thing like, boy, I'm gonna let you go home, but if you don't book a role in this, don't come back. Oh, you had to. That's it. She put her foot down. 
There I'm sorry. Go. She makes she makes killer bacon jalapeno mac and cheese. I couldn't give that up. You you can't give that up. That's that's how you do it. Hey, and and that's an awesome thing too. That you know, uh, the biggest motivational thing is is to have someone close to you. And if it's not your SO, your family member, whatever it might be, mo- uh, you know, backing you up. That's that means so much. And um, I'm pretty sure all of us here can definitely agree with that. That. The best type of motivation yeah, is but what as for them. as for what keeps me motivated personally um i still have moments where if especially when i wasn't booking anything for four months straight i still have moments where i question myself and i go do i really know what i'm doing or am i just kind of clinging to this because it's all i've known for the past decade and it's how i'm making my income but every time i start to doubt i think about the Legend of Zeldas. I think about the Dungeon Crawlers. I think about the ReZeros. I think about all these projects that I that I either know about or that haven't even existed yet that I will be hype as hell over. And I think about all those times that I get so excited about the possibility of getting to take part and be a character in that world. And as long as there exists stuff like that, that I can get excited about the potential of voicing for, uh, as long as there exists the the independent game creators, the independent animators who I can connect with and, and geek out with and help with their projects, that the looking forward to those future opportunities that I don't even know exist yet is what keeps me going. It always gives me something to look forward to, even if the present isn't the way I want it to be. Nice, nice. Those are very, very beautiful words, man. And speaking about looking forward to, we got another question. Um, Acer asks, what game are you really excited about that's going to be released this year? Uh, oh, I don't know if it's going to be this year, but Final Fan- uh, uh, Etrian Odyssey Cross, uh, probably Octopath Traveler. I'm really looking forward to that since it reminds me of Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. Oh, I love um, Final I'm hoping Mary Skelter is. En- I'm hoping Mary Skelter is enjoyable. I definitely, I definitely want to get back to that. Honestly, I just want to know how much money I have to send to Japan for them to localize Terry's Wonderland, the Dragon Quest Monsters remake. I'm. I, I don't know about it, but I hope that that they do that for you. <laughs> I'm not. Dragon I'm- Warrior Monsters was my childhood. It really? was what the game. I would get in trouble by my dad by my dad because he would catch me playing it using the light from my closet door at like three o'clock in the morning on the school night i i when i saw about that remake being made i lost my crap and then when it never got greenlit for localization i cried oh i want that remake so badly i hope you get it i hope so i mean i'll play it too because now now i know what now i'm gonna figure out i'm gonna be curious about it and be like what is this i want to play this too so I, I hope that comes out, you know, um, and it's cool that you're a Final Fantasy uh, um, fan. I actually have a question for you. Do you want to, would you want a voice in a Final Fantasy game? Is that something that's like up there too? I want them to remake Crystal Chronicles and I want to voice one of the main characters <laughs> in it. <laughs> uh, my, my my standing joke, I, um, I, I, I've gotten asked to like, you know, what do you, what's your dream run? I'm like, listen, as long as I can be a tree that's whistling in the distance in the background of a Final Fantasy game, that's great enough for me. And and I, I think that that's I wanna such be, a good I want to be the rock on the second floor of Street <laughs> 2. Yeah, the one that you kick, like the character kicks randomly, out, and you'll just be like, ow. <laughs> hey, buddy, I didn't do anything to you. What's with the aggression? I think I think that those games, you know, Final Fantasy 15 was a really, really good game. I like oh, my God. If I ever play a rock, I want like Rock's character name to be Dwayne. Dwayne? Dwayne the Rock! Dwayne the Rock! Ah! <laughs> I love it! <laughs> Alright, let me put in one more, qu- uh, a few more questions in here. So, Wolfheart Aurora, which she also read the script with us, um, says, Are you, do you do voice acting still as a hobby, or are you just only taking paid roles now? Oh, okay, okay, I understand that. No, uh, I still do volunteer work. Like, um, when Clace Husky was working on Winds of Change, I'm the one who went to him and was like, Clace, 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 you should put voices in this. You should put voices. It's going to be better if you put voices in it. And, and originally, I was just going to help set him up to do, like, sound effects, and then he decided to go full board with the voice acting. So originally, I was just doing the voice acting because I wanted to be a part of the game. 
he's the one that was like, yo, this is good quality. I want to pay you if I'm going to ask you to do this. Nice. So, I mean, I my time is definitely a finite amount uh, to invest. And so I am much pickier about what projects I take. There are a lot of cases where I have to turn down paid projects, not because I'm not interested, or rather not because I wouldn't be willing to do them, but because I simply don't have the time and the remaining vocal health to dedicate to that when I have other stuff I need to take care of. Um, but I am not opposed to doing freebies. I, I assisted someone with their senior thesis animation project just a couple weeks ago. So it, it's, yeah, it's not off the table. It's just less frequent and it it very, very heavily is influenced by how personally I invested in, uh, in it. If I want to be a part of the project, I'm probably gonna reach out to you even before it has voices and ask if, if I can help out. Nice, nice, and you know, um, piggybacking on your voice health, that's that's a main thing that I feel like, uh, especially someone who strains their voice a lot for a role, you need to you need to take care of your voice health. What what are some things that you do to you know try to keep your voice uh, spick and spam? Chug chug throat code and shut the hell up. <laughs> like literally, that's that's it. Like when my throat was destroyed from re zero sessions, the only way to give it a fastest chance to recover was to take. It's a product called uh, Nijam Pepakoa. It's a Chinese throat coat. I would gargle that and then I would put myself on vocal rest. Last week, uh, before I went to a weekend convention. For three days straight, and my if you asked my wife, she would confirm this, for three days straight, the only time I talked at all was when I was performing for a session. And even then, my throat wasn't fully healed. It just, I didn't have proper time to relax. But she didn't hear me for about six days because I was silent for three, and then I flew out on the fourth day, and then I was at a convention for two days. So it, it, it can be really rough, and you have to be willing to commit to not talking. No, and it's and it's you know that's our only instrument that is our tool that we use if we if our voice isn't up to par then we can't do work and if we can't do work well we ain't getting paid so uh, yeah that's definitely something that all of us all everybody listening should definitely take in uh, can you say again the throat coat so that everybody knows it's called ni n i jiom j i o m p p e i pa p a Koa, K O A. There you go. Uh, what he said. We should all get that. And we should all focus on not trying to strain our voices too much unless we're doing it for projects, because definitely that's our tool, man. That's our tool. So, next up, I have a question from Soggy. I could never say the other part of the name, so I always just call him Soggy, but he's a wonderful, wonderful uh, person. Um, so, here's a long one for you. As your career expands, do you ever find yourself working directly with others, like side by side in a studio, or is it still more confined? If it's more confined, would you hope to see your fellow vo uh, voice actors someday while recording? So that isn't really a question that would be determined based on level of experience or as the career grows. It's actually more based on the medium. Uh, Western animation is often one of the only animated mediums where the entire cast will record together because they record first and the animators work around it. In video games, in anime especially, um, in, in commercial and promo, uh, it, it's almost never the case that you will be recording in the same room with other actors. The, the, the sessions are almost all individuals. So most of my career, the only time that I would see fellow castmates is if their session was right before or right after mine and I was crossing paths with them as we were swapping places. Um, so yeah, I, I imagine if I started booking more Western animation, I'd probably have more cases where I'm recording with everyone else in the studio, and that's been the cases where I've worked with groups, um, but it's definitely based more on the actual medium itself and not so much the level of experience. Nice, and let me ask you a question. What would you prefer? Because to be quite honest, I, I do like confined a little bit more. I feel so much more nervous when there's other people around and we're doing a group session where I can like look at the person in the face as I'm saying a line. What 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 would you choose? Like what's what do you rather have? What do you rather? You know, I've always been kind of more of a lone wolf. Like I'm always scared that like <sighs> I'm supportive of all my castmates, but I'm worried of of not holding my own in the same room as them. 
Um, and when I'm in the studio, I want my focus to be on the director and the client who is telling me what they want. So while there is a benefit to being able to play off my castmates, I just feel a closer kinship with the, the client who's actually paying me and telling right. me what they want. So I just enjoy that one-on-one -on -one time more. Yeah, and also I feel like it's so cozy too, because you can just dress however you want, go in there, you know, just be like in PJs. Well, you shouldn't be in PJs, buddy. I mean, you yeah. could. Definitely no, I mean, if the could. PJs don't make noise, it, if the PJs don't make noise, then they don't care. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I agree with you on the lone wolf thing. I, I think it, I feel like, and you, you get more in the zone when you're by yourself, because no one's... I feel like everybody judges just a little bit. And when you're on your own, you can just be as wild and crazy and odd right. and just go with it. And plus, plus, plus when you're by yourself, you don't have the risk of someone who's less experienced or someone who may have made a mistake or is maybe a little less experienced accidentally talking over your line and ruining your take, uh, which I'm not mad at them. I'm just mad because now the take is ruined and that might have been a really good take. Right, definitely. Yeah, those are... Those, and, and, you know, um, doing dubs, uh, since you're doing ReZero, uh, I remember I was doing a, a dub audition, and it was really difficult, and I don't know if a lot of people um, listening have done dub auditions before, so let's really quick talk about that. You know, um, I'm pretty sure the same cases that you have where a line is one way, but in the Japanese version, it might be longer or shorter than what the English version might be. So you have to sor sort of like match your lips with what's going on in the screen. And then you have to do like 20 takes to make sure you get the right hit. So that is why crying in that one episode of Re-Subu, uh, Re Subaru, Re-Zero was so <laughs> difficult because I have learned that the only thing more difficult to me than screaming, well, screaming is not difficult, but more intensive and, and, and hard to keep consistent than screaming is crying. Because screaming, you can just, as long as you commit, you can put the volume, you can put the projection, you can put the anger or whatever. But crying, it either is authentic or it sounds fake as hell. And the problem is crying is the body's method of removing an excess of emotion. We can cry when we're excessively happy, excessively angry, excessively sad. It's not just sadness. So the body cries to get the excess emotion out and go back to being normal. Its goal is to stop. So when you are dubbing a scene and Subaru is crying and he's crying over the course of like 10, 12 lines and you're doing at least two takes per line and you can't you can't just sniffle or hiccup or whatever whenever um you have to do it to the exact movement of his lips on the screen yeah. but you still have to make it sound like real crying it's real crying under very specific guidelines and god that was so difficult i can imagine i can imagine it must have been and you know even like again for everybody listening it's always gonna be difficult it's always difficult no matter what no matter how much experience you have if you, I, crying on cue is hard enough crying while trying to match lips is must be almost nearly impossible so kudos to you for getting that for getting through that i'm sure that that was one hell of a day for you so let's go ahead and Oh, I, I, uh, Sean, can I hear you? Yes, I'm ah, here. Cool. Okay. So our next uh, question is doo -doo 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 -doo, from Soul Runner, and that is, what was your? The next question is Sandstorm Darude. Do 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 do. I, you know, since we're we're '90s kids, do you remember where everybody's cell flip phone had the Sandstorm song on it? You weren't cool if you didn't have Sandstorm playing in the background. When you were like, I'm I'm call. sorry I'm sorry no I just remember what? the '90s hold I just remember the '90s hold music of um please hold while the subscriber you were dialed is reached. <laughs> yes yes and I also remember we remember when we had to um put our phone to the car speaker everybody had to be quiet Shh, everybody quiet and then you would record the song and then that would be your new hit song for when so your ringtone when someone would call I, I those were the days man now everything's done illegally <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's illegal too but i mean we weren't it, it, now you can get caught so <laughs> let me go yeah. on to the next question soul runner asked what was your 
first, 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 first ever roll. God, I don't remember that. Come on, man. Um, I think my first paid role was for like this mobile game and I was playing a skeleton. It was like graveyard match or something like that. Um, first like studio role was I think Diabelle and Sword Art Online. Uh, but yeah, I had been doing VO. I've been doing like amateur stuff since back in the Newgrounds era in 2007. So, God, probably just go onto my profile at Sonic Mega on Newgrounds and just look through the flashes that I've been credited in. Probably one of the first ones from 2007 is is the first that I've ever done, payment or not. Nice, nice. So everybody, go ahead and and check out his Newgrounds at Sonic Mega. That'll that'll help you out. That'll figure. We'll figure it out there. Someone do it so that we can tell Sean what his first role was. Um, and uh, next up we have from PhoebeTube, um, this person asks, A lot of actors and VAs have a single catchphrase associated with them. Do people ever come at you with their best Rivali's Gill is now ready impressions? All the time. <laughs> Actually, no, they don't do it. They ask me to do it. And that puts me in an awkward position because I would love to, but out of respect for Nintendo's IP and their protectiveness of their mar of their branding, I, I don't do any character requests if I'm being recorded. If it's like private, then yeah, but it can be really, really awkward. It's be like, yo, can you say my friend is, is on the phone? Can you say Rivali's Gale's not ready? And I can't. I don't want to get in trouble. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I bet you do get it a lot. You have to. You have to get it <laughs> all the time. Right. So uh, let me go ahead. And, and, and is, is Rivali the only one you've been asked? I mean, I feel like now with Subaru. It really asked. is. Rivali, Breath of the Wild is the only one that people really bring up. Maybe Reen Schwarzer from Trails of Cold Steel, but that's also a really niche series. So it doesn't happen a lot. Oh, I wonder. I feel like now, 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 I mean, the, the first. When I asked everybody to tag me to ask me questions, the first thing was, "Who do you? Which which is your your favorite girl?" So I feel like now that's gonna be the question that you're always gonna get asked, and you're always gonna say Felix, right? Well, unless Orbo Bike is an option. <laughs> All right, let me go. Let me go to the next question. This is from Sickness. He was also with us. Um, I believe he was in our the last script we did, the the Carney one. Um, he asked. Do, 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 do. What was is your battle plan for alternating between VA and other tasks when you're first when you first started as a voice actor? For instance, you had a full time job, uh, plus looking for recording roles. When I when I first when I was in college, when I started doing VO, that was just as simple as using the free time I had between classes or after I was done for the day. When I moved out to California, I started by taking an, a graveyard ship job at Stanley Security as one of their their dispatchers. Um, and that allowed me to have money by working through the night while also having the day open if I needed to stay up to record auditions or do work. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Oh, About a year after Stanley Security, I decided to push myself to try and do voiceover full time. I figured forcing myself to sink or swim would assist me in taking the craft more seriously. And thankfully, it, it just started growing after I went to it full time. Um, when I did my... QA testing for NAS America and my brief stint at Disneyland, those were personal choices. It wasn't, I wasn't financially in trouble. I just wanted to challenge myself. Um, I think what helps is just having a good work ethic, just not putting off work that's in my inbox if I can take care of it then and my throat's in good condition because I don't know when the next time I'm going to catch a sickness from someone is or if I might inhale my food the wrong way and damage my trachea. So Let's just hope you never damage having... your trachea. <laughs> By inhaling. Uh, one time, one time I was gargling that Nijiam, the throat coat stuff to try and soothe my throat, and I inhaled it the wrong way, and I started hacking on it, and I did more damage to my throat than I was supposed to recover by using it. It actually extended how long I needed to recover. Oh. So even then, even when you're trying to do the right thing, you can end up worsening your condition. So it's really important to just have the self-drive and the, the uh, business ethic to or the work ethic to get stuff done when you can get it done. Yeah, and, and you know, piggybacking off of uh, what Sickness was saying, how does a regular work day for you look like? You know, because you It have... varies wildly. Yeah. 
it does. Small. No, go ahead. What were you saying? No, because I mean, like, in, in, in a way, you know, let's say you have, like, how many projects would you take up at once? How, how many, depending on, you know, depending, of course, on how much you have to actually read or do. I like money. So <laughs> I like money. <laughs> well, okay. So it, it, it becomes a careful balance. So for example, last week when, when my throat was completely destroyed by the time I was done, there was one day where I had a four hour uh, anime session from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Then it took me an hour and a half to drive home because of Los Angeles traffic. At 2 p.m. I had an at-home client session for about two hours. Then at 4 p.m. I had uh, an interview um, that I needed to prepare for or that I was doing similar to this. That was until 6. After 6 was the post-interview uh, question answering that I was doing for people who missed out on it. And then from 8 to I think around 10.30 was doing auditions for stuff I didn't have the chance to do throughout the day. Mm, busy, busy, busy man. But then, but then there are other days when I just sit around twiddling my thumbs playing Smash for 6 hours because... I, I took care of the auditions within the first hour and nothing else came in throughout the day and I didn't have anything to work on. Um, so that's that's typically when I'll try to fill my time with workshops, fill it in with research, uh, make sure I tackle the auditions as they come in. Um, it can vary wildly and so it's very important to both have the work ethic to get stuff done before it's due when you have a chance, but also the ability to keep yourself entertained or seek out opportunities for work when it's not sitting in your inbox right i see i see definitely that's a that's a really good answer right there for everybody hearing out there you know um definitely your your work ethic and the way you take your time is extremely important and you know um uh, oh by the way uh emil found your first role ever was stop motion racers that was your first ever. oh god oh god <laughs> That was your first No, ever. no, that's not canon. I'm not counting that. Erase it. <laughs> Erase it from the web. So, uh, you Oh know, god. I'm 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 totally I, I, we we just got through all of the questions and real quick thank you for everybody who went in ahead and uh, asked and tagged me and asked Sean some questions. Some of them I didn't go through um, and I'm sorry, but uh, you know, I I got through most of them and um, real quick Sean, you know, I don't think I said this, but uh, thank you so much for coming here and, and being with us on this marvelous Wednesday night. We truly appreciate your existence in this Discord and your dis existence in general, and we're so ready to hear you on ReZero, man. And, and we're ready, and for anybody who's playing games now, go get Zelda. Breath of uh, uh, Breath of the Wild, right? Right? Is that it? Zelda Breath of the Wild. Yeah. And, yes, and, yes, um, yes. You see that that goes to show you how much Yenny plays video games, and <laughs> um, I, I don't remember, remember, guys. Remember, guys, you need a Nintendo to play it. <laughs> you need a Nintendo, guys, and um, you know, really, thank you. We appreciate you so much for coming out here and giving us tips and tricks, and just you know, letting us know more about you. We really, really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Oh, of course. You know, and um, we were talking about this before, and I totally said I was going to talk about this now. So for everybody listening, um, you know, Sean, Sean and I go way back to when I auditioned for the Twitch host role because Sean was one of the question. One of the questions was, who would you uh, want to interview if you had the position? And that's when you had first gotten your role. And I said, mm. I just found this guy out on Twitter at Sonic Mega, and this guy is doing this, this, and this. And then I got the role because of you. <laughs> so I'm gonna say I got the role because of you. I'm, I'm gonna thank you for this. So that's fine. I mean, I do the same thing. Part of how I got Rivali was that um, they they asked, did you want to do some reads for him? And I said, hell yeah. And then they played the scene that I was gonna be dubbing. And when I saw this stupid burb arsehole on screen, I started squeeing like a fanboy. And unbeknownst to me there were hq people from nintendo listening in via skype and they heard me squealing in the studio booth over this stupid bird and they they wanted people who were just as passionate about the project as they are and i think it actually played a role in them wanting to add me to the cast as that role in in addition so you you doing that is just similar to how i managed to book some of my work 
there you go and i think passion is really one thing that all of us need you know you shouldn't you should definitely never go for a role for for everybody listening you shouldn't go for a role if you're not really passionate about it if you don't believe that it you know can excel in 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 a certain way because when you're passionate about something just as what happened with sean as what happened with me things go well because I, I think passion is is one of the biggest things you need in this type of in this niche market that they're we're not in. they're not guaranteed to go well but they're more likely to go well yeah definitely that that is true that is true there th i feel like you you can't go wrong with positivity even if you don't get a role you being positive and, and trying is the biggest thing and i know that you said uh workshops do, so for everybody out there do you still uh do trainings do you still uh, attend oh courses? regularly like just just looking at my emails i have a workshop on july 17th june 18th june 25th um and i i as new ones come in or that my agency suggests to me i regularly sign up for them i have to keep abreast of what's current in industry trends wow there you go guys and that's another that's another thing to put on your list always continuously the learning learn <laughs> the learning never stops the learning never stops because the the fads and the industry trends are always changing mm -hmm. yeah that is true that is true I, I see a lot of you know um for male roles and and female roles uh there's there's always that one voice that they look for for specific things you know what i mean like like in video games like they especially like let's talk about you know like serious games you know like even final fantasy let's put final fantasy there most of most if not all of the lines for the main characters were serious and they were deep voices i mean there was one character that didn't have a deep voice but everybody else has a deep serious voice and not everybody can do that. And the same thing for, for women in voice acting. Not always do they want that little high-pitched anime voice. Sometimes they want a deeper voice. And um, knowing knowing what you're good at is great. But, like, how Sean did when he went against the grain is also okay, too. Right, Sean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, Sean. So we're at our last few minutes and you know um definitely i would like for you to go ahead if you have anything else you want to mention to all of us listening any i have wise to pee like a racehorse oh my goodness so uh tmi i had to run while you guys were reading a script i had to like run towards the bathroom i was like oh my god run. what yeah i had to what? i was like run you're run. hosting this and you got to use the bathroom <laughs> and i couldn't <laughs> the ba in my defense the bathroom is in my room, so all I had to do was run that way, and then I was able to go. And I you know, you know what happens, right? If you go pee during your own show, you're in trouble. <laughs> it's not. It doesn't count because I was. I came back right as the next like page went, so I had to scroll down for the Twitch stream. I did my job, man. It's hard. Two hours. I mean, man, how did you do it? How did you do it? <laughs> <laughs> Jokes on you, the trash can was underneath my chair the whole oh, time. No! <laughs> well, as, as, as we were saying, um, as I was saying, oh, we were saying, why are we? Um, definitely, if you have any wise words for all of us to hear, and I will let you end them, end this, this, uh, open mic night and this guest night with some wise, wise words and a nice goodbye, I leave the stage to you. Uh... Wise, wise words. Remember to smash that like, comment, and subscribe button! No, um... Oh. Uh, I mean, I'd steal a quote that my mom taught me, which was, you know, pursue what you love and it'll never feel like a... Or, yeah, do what you love and it'll never feel like work. But at that same time, be willing to take on work in order to make ends meet. The only reason why I chose to go full-time on VO was when I felt I had the finances to save me if everything went horribly wrong. And it's not wrong to chase your passion, but it is wrong to chase your passion without putting things in place to protect you if it takes a little bit longer than you were hoping. Um, so, so, you know, like people often say, prepare for the, or, or dream of the best possible future, but prepare for one that's going to give you a little bit of a run for your money. Um, I think things will just work out better if you, if you plan smart and you plan hard and you plan ahead of time. 
and that's really just it. Just just always be open to learning. I, I think co living involves always giving yourself something else to reach for. So if you let yourself coast, uh, you're gonna lose what it means to to find enjoyment. You're gonna lose what it means to accomplish something. And I hope to always have something to work towards. I don't plan to retire until I'm dead. And that's only because at that point, death is gonna be like, hey, hey, come on, come on, get, come on, let's go. And I'll be like, no, no, stop it. I still haven't punished Jenny for peeing during your own show. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for those wise words. And honestly, um, those are those are really good things to come by. I mean, a lot of us are, are doing double time, you know, uh, the reason, like, uh, today we were talking about trying to do, you know, other, um, Twitch streams at other times, and honestly, I, I work a day shift, I, I work a day job, because I still can't be full-time voice acting, and I do it for the same reason that you're doing, so that when I do want to go full-time, I have the funds to, you know, back me up, and those were really good yep. words, and, and your mom was, is so right about doing something that you're passionate about, I think, um, a lot of us don't know what we want to do in our lives and when we find that uh, that one thing that we're good at it feels so good so i know the one thing the one thing i want to do in life right now is pee oh my goodness okay so guys we have to let sean go because he has to pee and it's unfair because by the way everybody that's asking yes i have a master bedroom and yes i have a toilet inside a master bedroom everybody's like where are you peeing yenny um so yeah sean thank you so much where the hell she wants this is a free country <laughs> sean one last time if you want to say a goodbye before we end this stream and a real quick before you say that goodbye once again thank you so much this was an awesome guest tonight you made it awesome we are all so happy that you came here to to be with us today and and to give us all your insights really and truly Thank you very much for having me. If you guys want to follow me, if you want life reflections, follow me on Facebook, Sean Chiplock. If you want career updates and announcements, follow my Twitter at Sonic Mega. If you just want Poop Lord meme posting, go to my Tumblr at Sonic Mega. I think those are the main three, yeah. Awesome, guys. There you go. There you have it. And I will post those on Discord, too, so everybody can have them. Everybody listening, have a wonderful, wonderful night. And Sean, have a great night as well, okay? Tell your wife I say I that. will. <laughs> I will. All right. Bye now.